if Sam Darnold was a Hall of Famer after week one, <laughs> surely Patrick Mahomes after week two G O D is a H O F -er. They got a statue already outside of Arrowhead because they're about to go do their first home game. Right. And and Patty Mahomes has a statue coming out it's week been one home you know, the, his first home game. They're going to unveil the statue. What is for it? Paper mache? How they how they do that so quick? They are good. It's called technology. Technology. Mm -hmm. It's probably three D lasers. Three D three D printer. Three D exactly. printer. Three D printer. <laughs> what do we have for him, Johnny? That's the winner. <laughs> yeah, nailed it. Well, three pre three D print a, a new heart. That's pretty I, crazy. I could be wrong on this. Let's not get too too far away from the point here. Yeah. I thought <laughs> Patrick Mahomes gets our uh, not, divided attention. It's not true. The, I thought. The rating system went up to one. I thought it was one fifty three point eight, and he was one fifty four point eight last week. Did he break it? Did they had to add a number? <laughs> it's one fifty eight, isn't it? No, it's it's. I, he got a one fifty four point eight rating for the game. QBR, but uh, QB rating, the old school rating. But I thought that it was one fifty three point eight was the max, and we yeah. just gave him another. They were like, you know what? Tick, give him another tick. Give him one fifty four. He did. He did six touchdowns. I could have sworn it was one fifty three point eight. Is it one fifty four? I'm pretty sure it was one fifty three. You can Google it. It's worth a Google. He broke the system. <laughs> well, 23 I think, out of 28 for six I, touchdowns. I think old Jason was probably the only one who was maybe marginally in on Patrick Mahomes. I, I just was, was a lot of uncertainty and a lot of hype around him. So I, I admittedly have missed out on all the Patrick Mahomes as I miss out on most quarterbacks sure. just because anyway. i was excited about him doesn't mean i didn't miss out on him too because he's way too expensive in any type of format well that this patrick mahomes is the talk of james james connor was the t talk of the town last week in dynasty and now going in two weeks I yeah mean, well obviously, it, didn't, it didn't hurt that mahomes already had rumbles maybe he wasn't quite the talk but he was well, already kind of i mean the, he you know, know four touchdowns and tyreek hill and everything they did last week patrick mahomes was here but then he got the statue out front of Kansas City Arrowhead. So that's you know. a real thing? You didn't no, make that I'm, up? No, I'm making that <laughs> okay. up as we speak. <laughs> we really had him going. We got him. I got him. I got him. <laughs> they really made him a 3D no. paper mache. So Print with the six touchdowns, like he's not only here, he's already been here. He's done that. He's yeah, you know, like you said, he's a, he's a, he's got. They're making his gold jacket. They're 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 checking his, checking his, his arm length. Arm length, length he's getting shoulders. fitted this week. And what the biggest thing is, I wanted to make sure we talked about this first, is because I know that everybody else is talking about Patrick Mahomes, and it's not. I think that you'll see us go this season and try to talk about people that everybody else isn't, so you can have something else to listen to when in the season everybody's yeah, that, kind of. That's not going to work this episode, right? But. No, no, well, you know. But in the <laughs> yeah. season, everybody kind of talks about the same stuff, and I yeah. get that. So we're going to try our best to talk about different ways to help you with your dynasty team in season, and but we have to talk about Patrick today. Mahomes. Because we were, I don't, I don't think it was that bad. Casey just said that even Jason was the only one that was marginally in. It wasn't that we weren't marginally in. It was just like we had we. To me, everybody was talking in the off season about how great Patrick Mahomes looked in that Week Seventeen game yeah. last year, and I watched it twice, and I'm like, I mean, he was okay, right? But I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't like. Career, well, he wasn't like MVP it Brett wasn't, Favre. Like everybody was, it, it, it was an okay outing, and I get it. it. Was his first start, but it was Week 17 against a team that didn't care. And I'm like, how are everybody jumping to conclusions on that one start? Sure. It he didn't he didn't throw it four picks. I'll give you that. But so I was like, all right, we and we said this months ago with the with all of the we with all of the weapons that the Chiefs were bringing to the table and Andy Reid. There was no way he wasn't going to be getting fantasy production even if he was bad for the team as in like picks and turning the ball over but his life is so easy there's there. no chance that i would have that we could have I, I wouldn't have predicted half of this through two right. weeks well i mean nobody even if you I'm loved just him saying, nobody like was I, predicted half, half of this I, oh, you see, know, I told you but i told I'm you 10 touchdowns saying, in two weeks 10 touchdowns in two weeks i'm just saying like and not it's not even like Highly efficient touchdown, like twenty three out of twenty eight, three hundred twenty six yards. Well, like I was saying, just, he just broke the quarterback rating. They gave him an extra point. There's nothing you can really do about it. Andy Reid's a, a, a he's reaching his vet, prime. a veteran coach. <laughs> his, his mental prime as a coach knows how to knows his X's and O's and knows how to scheme things around. And now he's got weapons everywhere. Throw Sammy in there. Weapons everywhere. One of the best tight them ends boys, in the league. Them boys are basically doing what you and I would do in a draft and punt on quarterbacks or tight ends and they just punted on a defense in their draft and they were just like, we're just going to try to score 50 in every game. <laughs> right. 
which has created this perfect storm for Patrick Mahomes because their defense has given up points. Granted, they paid the played the Steelers last week, and that's what they do. It's, it's very similar. They're just not quite as good at it as, it, as it seems Kansas City is. But, I mean, Patrick Mahomes, they're just – no matter what defense the Steelers were throwing at him, whether it was a zone or man, they were beating him. You can't guard Tyreek Hill by himself. You can't guard Sammy Watkins. He's coming into his own. He looked phenomenal out there before and after the catch. It's just whatever the, – the worst play they had was like five-yard gains. <laughs> right, right. Like the they, they didn't even need third down in this game. You yeah. could have just given them – like three total downs you punt on third down if you get to it like <laughs> for real they were just it was just so easy for him and it just looked so smooth and simple it just looked like they were playing they were playing with him playing checkers well or they were playing chess well right were playing checkers. yeah right. so basically what what i was saying was that jay wayne being the only one that was marginally in is if you go back to last year jay wayne did kind of like patrick mahomes some and like you and I are almost never gonna pay for a quarterback, and Jay Wayne will pay for a oh, quarterback. Yeah. So Jay like, Wayne's a quarterback that, guy. and that's why he was more. And I just again to piggyback off what you were saying, like there's the one game, and everyone was already saying how good he was gonna be, and I, I just wasn't a hundred percent sure what was gonna be. So there's no way I was paying the price. Yeah, um, and I already don't pay the price, so yeah. there's no way I'm paying the price for that. Right. I don't have exactly. Patrick Mahomes anywhere because I couldn't pay the price either. But I was always like sad to see him go to someone else's team and like dang it why'd you have to reach for a quarterback right there i i could have got him later maybe so yeah the- well and and jim i have to talk about the price for a second i just got done with a uh you know 500 hundred dollar startup a couple you know a month ago now and i look back at the draft board and he went in the 11th round so it's like obviously he could have gone in the second round and it would have been worth it at this point but yeah. it's just like all right 11th round that wasn't terrible um, no, that wasn't bad, that, but I mean, when in all, in the auctions that we did, he usually went for a reasonable amount of money. Yeah, um, and I've seen him go higher than than. No, me too. But it, it, but that was that was one of those things. It's like everybody in that draft, outside of the Aaron Rodgers pick, you could tell that quarterback late round quarterback had been hammered. It was a late start up it just barely finished before week one kind of thing you know mm-hmm. and so late round quarterback had been hammered through the system enough to where everybody had punted their way out and of course you know i do my thing and right take andy but Dalton that Mahomes in the last guy, round. if he put together any semblance of a first half of that draft he's just hard to beat right now kicking wieners exactly <laughs> well the, 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 the touchdowns were spread around in this game but you can see the targets i mean it's kelsey watkins and tyreek hill and you know cry your heart out for cream hunt thank god he took that catch and got in the end zone with it but you know still had 70 something yards rushing no no i'm just saying as far as like as far as like you know the six touchdowns were obviously that number pops off the screen but like 320 yards isn't incredible these days anymore it's just that he only did it he did it on 23 completions and only 23 28 attempts which is just nasty so for fantasy football like you just you know it's just such a it's so good for the players that are with him, obviously. But when you get, it's like that Pittsburgh offense. When you get, you know, the Antonio Browns and um, the Le'Veon Bells. Obviously, in the last couple of years, he's not there right now. But those types of guys are just getting all the targets and all the run. You got Kelsey, and who's a mismatch, like you know, just going through the op, the the weapons there. Kelsey and Watkins and Tyreek Hill all out there at the same time, plus Kareem Hunt, and and you know, you got this guy throwing lasers highly accurate lasers mind you then what the defense can't do anything about it and it it just it's just adding up for major major fantasy points for you so this is just one of those things that are riding this way for the rest of the season right just hope you continue to catch this lightning in a bottle well yeah I'm, on a side note i mean to talk about all those targets and to see kareem hunt or really any running back not get targeted is is a little bit of a bummer for you you were hoping they were big talks about getting the running back more targets in this offense especially kareem hunt's name was brought up a lot sure being used in the more by andy reed well yeah yeah, exactly we had 50 catches last year and andy reed saying i'm gonna get him more involved so i mean it hasn't been that way to start has one catch through two games but i mean then you look at the bottom of this thing and and robinson's got you know one target for three yards and a touchdown connelly has got two targets two catches a touchdown like exactly you know so it's the what's the amazing about what patrick mahomes is doing and yes a credit to Andy Reid. They let him sit for a year behind a guy who was uh, a pro's pro. A pro's pro um, knew how to run this system and let him let his guy develop. Then you know showed Alex Smith the door essentially. 
Um, and but what's I think you already pointed to it is the efficiency of what Mahomes has been doing has been um, outstanding. I think in the first game he completed 15, 15 balls. This game he completed 23 of 28 attempts. You got Roethlisberger on the other side. Now, obviously, he was down 21 nothing uh, in a hurry. But, I mean, he's got 60 attempts. Exactly. And they lost. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he was trailing the whole game, and he's doing everything he can to get back. So it's tough to have a running game at that point. So but. let's get let's get let's if you're okay with this, let's move into the do you do you sell at an all time high Patrick Mahomes question because actually a couple of years ago, um, Ben Roethlisberger had a two game streak where he was five touchdowns in a row, and you know, and then you know, different quarterbacks at different times. There's been little bubbles. I, Ryan Fitzpatrick's in a bubble right now. Yeah, like there's this bubble is not sustain. There's no ch- obviously. I don't I mean, if you if you've been on Twitter or anything like that. Like you've probably seen it and you probably cracked up and laughed and like Patrick Mahomes is on pace for eighty touchdowns and zero interceptions. I mean, you know, like <laughs> yeah. that's I love that, those odd pace. Those, but but it's awesome and it's hilarious and it's funny. But like you you know do you in a di- we're you know in a dynasty league do you Enjoy well, these massive of all, amounts of points from Patrick Mahomes, or do you take the basically any other quarterback that you can plug in there for twenty something points a week? Do you keep? I mean, obviously he's not going to score forty every week, but I've, if at a minimum, it look. I mean, this offense is just it's hard to you know and to, until it looks like the, injuries start taking away some of these pieces. How can you defend them? So why can't you why can't you assume that Patrick Mahomes is going to be better than every other quarterback every single week? Well, in redraft, I mean, you hold Mahomes and you try to get that you championship. try to get the championship, um, and maybe you do the same in dynasty. I mean, there's. I think you're going to be hard pressed to see games where the Chiefs don't score, you know, 30 points, and that'll probably like I would imagine or give up their points. Be, well, yeah, they're, and they're going to have to score because I don't think they really have much of a defense. It's, it's whether you know that this, can't be under. If the offensive line either. can hold up and and be and be decent, and they can stay lucky and and be healthy. I mean, there's no reason that I don't think Patrick Mahomes and this offense, like I said, will score 30 points a game. Personally, I mean, I would send some stuff out for. Patrick Mahomes to see if somebody else wants him more than I do because I don't really care one way or the other obviously he could take you to a dynasty championship just like this year just like if you know in the middle of the season you had Deshaun Watson last year and he was doing similar things right um me personally I might I might try to get rid of him like right now Deshaun Watson's Deshaun Watson's in a little bit of a lull he's definitely not as, as the talk of the town like everybody was rushing out and spending probably the most on any quarterback in auction drafts well you know. let, let me let, let's just so you say get rid just, of him but you mean like you you would move him for a king's ransom yeah oh for sure you, i mean you, i'm not gonna you say get rid of him like you know toss him out with the backyard trash like obviously you mean you would I mean, you I would move him for a ridiculous sum yeah i mean that's that's what we're talking about here yeah jay wayne that's where i was going with the deshaun watson thing like you you could have sold him for whatever you wanted in this offseason because yep. he had that stretch of games and it was awesome and that's your last memory and he's but he's hasn't been fantastic he's still been very startable and yeah and, and you know probably better than people are giving him credit for fantasy wise anyway right. the, the fantasy stat lines for deshaun aren't as bad as what it looks like on the but field but you could have sold him for whatever you wanted he was carrying your team in spots last year mahomes obviously in these first couple of weeks i'm sure every patrick mahomes team probably won yeah. yeah, you know, I think people that have Patrick Mahomes. So yes, a king's ransom is obviously like I'm not just going to give away. Well, I just you know, I, I'm not I'm not ripping you. I'm just saying you're kind of like, oh well. We wanted to hear the words "king's ransom." Yes, yeah. needed to hear those needed words. Needed to hear that. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think that's implied. It was implied. <laughs> it's implied. I'm not going to trade. I think the people that spent a bunch of money to get Patrick Mahomes on their team and now they're they're reaping these benefits immediately. I think they're going to hear you say maybe they should trade him and balk at that and be like, "What are you talking about? Why would I ever trade Patrick Mahomes?" I mean, I don't I don't care. I'll keep well, him. Before we get too far away from it, Deshaun Watson had just had, he has the 19th most quarterback points. But it's only four away from being top 12. Sure. You know, six more right. one more touchdown and or something like that. One that more touchdown off- and a scramble and he's top 12. But the offensive line is pretty bad. Pro Football Focus has him ranked as the second worst offensive line in the league through two the weeks. The Texans offensive Texas line. Texas offensive line. But if, you know, but going that direction, he's four points better than Sam Darnold. So you know, if I can give, if I can say, well, one more touchdown, he's top twelve. One less touchdown, and Sam Darnold's better. So just like Casey's saying, 
Deshaun Watson was the best thing to ever happen to fantasy football for six weeks last year. And obviously the injury took him out of there. And but that's what I kind of meant by sometimes you just get on those sometimes magical seasons happen. So yeah. you never know. You don't know how long we, I mean, we I know for a fact that you're not going to get that Patrick Mahomes is not going to throw for 80 touchdowns. Yeah. And I don't think but the streak's going to end it, going with, with the, those types of weapons and, and the ridiculousness that is Patrick Mahomes right now. Because again, I was the one saying he's a one start rookie and there's no chance that he's not going to have rust and he's not going to he's not going to step in there and be as good as Alex Smith was after running that system for 5 years and he's stepped in there and been twice as good as Alex Smith. So there's no chance he's not he's going to continue this pace but it looks like there's it'd be hard to make a good argument that he's not going to be a top 2 or 3 quarterback for the rest of the year. I mean you would like to think but I mean like you said things happen he could all all of a sudden Six eight games into the season, he could be looking like he's a little green all of a sudden. And for, this for could whatever happen. reason, people start kind of figuring out what's going on a little bit. Right now, it hasn't been very hard on him. Like it's been right. pretty easy to do what he's doing. And I, obviously, you would su- expect that to continue on some level. But as things go forward, if you know people start to, it's just like when you see a pitcher for the first time, sure, and he's lighting everybody up. Well, by the second, third time through the rotation, yeah, they figured you out. I'm not saying that that's the case, but I'm what I'm saying is that you could get a ton right for this guy right now. And if there is any other replace any position that is the most replaceable, yes. it's quarterback in fantasy. But you know, there's certainly an advantage to having the guy who's the top one or two quarterbacks in the league. Like when Cam Newton's crushing, Cam exactly. Newton will help you win a fantasy championship. Exactly. Well, for fear of... Uh, but we've seen that go all over the place. Like Cam's awesome, and then he's killing you. Yeah. Next year, you know. Right. So for fear of um, bringing the cell talk early because the schedule gets hard narrative up, looking at Patrick Mahomes' upcoming schedule. So he's got the Niners in week right. three. Right, and I was going to say, like, I don't see the streak really ending against the 49ers. I think they have a decent defense, but, I mean, he's at home. First game, what was it? Statues going up. <laughs> Is this his first game at Arrowhead, yeah. or was it the yeah. first game at Arrowhead? No, it's, 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 it's his first road. game home. On the road. So I don't see it ending against the Niners. I mean, But then I, in week four, he's at the Broncos. In week five, they're at home again versus the Jags. So there's, those are two brutal matchups for him. Then they're, they're at Foxborough play the Patriots, home versus the Bengals, home versus the Broncos, at the Browns, Cardinals, Rams, Ravens, Seahawks, at the Seahawks. So it's it gets tougher, and there's a tough little stretch. Those I mean, next that, two after the, at the, that week, four and five, that's going to be. Broncos and Jaguars. Those are, your, those are your makers right there. Like it, and the cra- Well, what the crazy thing is is, like, again, he doesn't have to be super awesome. Like, Tyreek Hill is awesome, and he can get the ball to him from anywhere on the field. Anywhere. So from farther away that, from Tyreek like, Hill than anybody else in the league. He doesn't even have to have league. this great game to, to be still your – giving you 20 points in your fantasy lineup because he hit Tyree Kill from one side of the field to the other side of the <laughs> yeah. field. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or Sammy Watkins. Yeah. Or Kelsey. Like, there's just so much going That's on that exactly. there's, and they're all good. And, and that may be why it's unstoppable because in a, on a normal team, like right now, Gronk is well, well, outside of Jalen Ramsey. Gronk's unstoppable. If you take away, if you play anybody other than Jalen Ramsey, Ty, Tom Brady makes Gronk unstoppable. Gronk makes Tom Brady unstoppable. All that fun stuff. But then you add in, and you know they're bringing in Josh Gordon to bring in something else because they don't have anything else. Like you bring it, Tyreek Hill on any team by himself, he's unstoppable. And you got so you got the mismatch nightmare tight end. You got the mismatch nightmare. We've never seen anything like Tyreek Hill. And now you got and Sammy Watkins was a top five pick. He's still a guy who possesses four three speed. Like he's a fast guy who we saw what he could do last week yeah. after the catch with the ball in his hands, getting down the sideline. Kareem Hunt's a factor in his own right, and I mean Connolly is super fast. Like this is just a really fast offense. Like Connolly coming in off the bench is a spark guy. Like he's sure. really fast. Sure. They have super spark guy. They have um, and Robinson. They like Robinson right. a ton, and they have the speedy guy from. Uh, the, the, Oregon, um, yeah, DeAnthony, DeAnthony Thomas. Thomas. Oh, like, yeah, there's exactly. just a ton of speed. This is the what, NASCAR what are you, a mamba package. or something like that. Yeah. He's a mamba guy. They always named him like some type of poisonous snake. <laughs> um, but yes, those next two games, Jay Wayne, that four and five against, after this at, week at, at 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 the Broncos and then home against the Jags. Two of the, I mean, obviously the Jags is the 
probably the best defense in the NFL. You got the Vikings and the Rams that say, "Hey, who, who, what, what the heck's going on over here?" When you talk like that, but you know, and then you got the Broncos who are pretty dang decent themselves against, especially a pass rush um, and some good corners. So the next two out of three weeks, that'll be fun. I mean, that'll be fun to see this juggernaut go up against. That'll be like the old uh, unstoppable force versus the immovable object type thing. Water versus fire. It'll be. <laughs> It'll be a good time. So, strength versus strength. Yeah, that'll definitely show us what he's made of. It's going to be tough. They haven't faced a, a, a they haven't faced a ton of pressure. They played the Chargers in Week One with no Bosa. Ingram was getting after him, but I mean, it's totally different when Bosa's in there. So, I, I, I'd be holding Patrick if you, if you want to go get a King's ransom for it. You know, hit us up. And the, the Chargers pay- are down a couple of That's, uh, cover corners. And- I like where you were going there, Jay Wayne. I if you're not a if if you're a patreon member shoot us an email with some type of trade offer that you got going on don't send patrick mahomes in a trade unless it is a ridiculous amount if that person hits accept right. as as the guy me and casey been cheerleaders for years i go back to john kitna and then i i'm i've been late round qb before it got popular i'm the guy i, I throw cold water at quarterbacks but I'm not selling Patrick Holmes unless it is a truly King's ransom. So if you're not a Patreon member anyway, go ahead and give us that five dollar holler. If you're in a Patri- if you're into Pat Mahomes sweepstakes, one way or another, buying or selling, get in there and shoot some emails to us. And as the guy that says, I'll sell if you'll give me anything for a quarterback, I'll go find another one. I'm gonna have a hard time letting go of Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. So hit us up on the five dollar holler. Get go to Patreon, find us out over there, and. Uh, and and let's do try to help you do some business. Yeah, you can find find us at our website, theffdynasty.com, or go to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. And you know, you can have all kind of personal interaction with us that you'd like. We're gonna go ahead and take a quick break here. We beat Patrick Mahomes to death. We'll come back, talk a little bit of uh Steelers. Steelers? Other side, the other of, side of that ball. All right. We'll be back more married to the game. All right, welcome back in. If you've noticed there's been no cracks tonight. That's because we are drinking some beautiful sours from uh, Revelry Brewing that only come in bottles, so it's kind of hard to get that. I tried it once, and it didn't doesn't work that great. Plus, you don't drink it out of the bottle when I sit here and pour it into a glass on yeah. here. We got some throwbacks, some Ramblin' Rubus. Mm, can't get that anymore. That stuff's that so anymore. nice, you can't drink it out the bottle? The, the boys all have... <laughs> yeah, I mean, you shouldn't. You got to let it breathe. <clears throat> oh, I don't... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about anything. It's all nice about mouthfeels and it's, it smells of leather bound books, and <laughs> aromatics, rich mahogany. <laughs> so, no cracks tonight. Sorry about that one. Um, but Maybe a little later. We'll see. Yeah, we might have to switch it up. There's only so many bottles you can go through, but definitely go check out the hold for sure. That's Revelry's new sour facility. <laughs> Facility. Yep. Um, Just it's awesome. Them if you're out. in Charleston, it's right across the street from there. Uh, I guess mainstay brewery, right, and the uh, rooftop. And then next week they're they're doing a little collaboration party on Wednesday, uh, the September twenty sixth. If you're local to Charleston, Mex One and, and the Hold is doing a collaboration, Amigose. No, so I like that. So it sounds like Amigos, but it's a Gose, mm-hmm. which is a sour beer. If you're not familiar, into that, yeah. So that'll be a lot of fun. It was supposed to happen last week. Hurricane Flow really, yeah, kicked it out of there. Excuse me, Flow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to get in here, like we said, talk a little bit Steelers. Mostly James Conner are going to throw a little Juju Smith-Schuster in there at the end of that. Um, but before we get rolling, I wanted to say anybody who's listening on the podcast who maybe doesn't already subscribe to us on YouTube, we're like 20 people away from 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. So if anybody listening hasn't already subscribed on YouTube, it would be awesome if you guys could go over there just take a second and hit that subscribe button. Even if you don't use it, it's still we break up videos and you'll get notifications when we post stuff. And we go so, live. We've been going yeah. live on Sunday. Good the, call, Jay Wayne. The first week we went live uh, to answer sit start questions and we made that exclusive to our Patreon members only. But then last week we went ahead and hit the little public button on that. So anybody that was subscribed to our YouTube page got a notification. The FF Dynasty boys are going live to answer your sit start questions. We made sure to answer all of our Patreon questions first in depth, and then we got into that YouTube chat and answered a bunch of people's right. st- sit start questions. So be on the lookout for that. We, we're trying to get in there about eleven forty-five Sunday morning a.m. for your pleasure. All right, enough with all that jibber jabber. Let's get to some fun jibber jabber. <laughs> James, James Connor. Connor is going to be our subject today, Mister um, James Connor. Yeah, you. 
Well, I can't call anybody Mister with that haircut. Oh, why is it still there? You must have lost a bet. Maybe it's a prank. Maybe it's it's for a real, bet. for real. It's not for real, for real. I How mean, do you know? Because. It's two weeks in a row, yeah. and I he's mean, not a rookie. I mean, he's hanging on. That's what I'm saying. It's two weeks in a row, and I mean, he's well, not. Well, maybe now he's superstitious, and he's like, hey, I'm doing work, so I got to leave it. Uh, maybe it's some stuff we don't know about. Hmm. He must have lost some sort of bet. <laughs> there's, sure. I can't believe there's not any news out on it. He lost a bet. Well, Had to have. Haircut so, or not. So James Conner right now was fantastic week one. Week two... Not as great on the ground, but they were down 21 points early. Um, failed to short of a comeback, uh, losing to the Chiefs at home, 42-37. Only had eight carries for 17 yards, but did get you a touchdown uh, in, in that effort. Not a whole lot of rushing to be spoke of, obviously, when you're down like that early. That game plan kind of goes out the window a little bit. Sure. He did end up with five catches and 48 yards, and then you put in the rushing touchdown there. It's fine day for James Conner once again. Um, so if you're a Le'Veon Bell owner who has James Conner, that was great for you again. If you're not and you own Le'Veon Bell, which is really kind of the question that I'm striving at here is, do you sell James Conner right now? How could you? Well, I th- there's a two part question. I How think. could you? If, if you have if you have Le'Veon Bell, the, and you have James Conner together. If you got the pair, then obviously James Conner's done a nice job. Like he nineteen on a, in a bad game script, still got nineteen points last week, nineteen and a half. He's got the fourth it's most awesome touchdown run and, too. And, he was and, stuffed and spun out of that thing and dove and made a miraculous play. And we're talking dynasty here, right? Just to clarify, we were no, normally talking dynasty, but we're in season, so sometimes you can get caught up whether it's redraft or dynasty. Gotcha, gotcha. So dynasty. So you know, fourth most running back points in PPR right now. Um, for James Conner, if you have the pair, I don't see how you can sell James Conner. Yeah, if you usually have the pair, you'll you'll if, bet on the on the flop. Right, right, exactly. You want to see the flop. <laughs> so you, if you got them both, here you know, I got to take the Oldham if, reference. If you got them both, when Le'Veon Bell comes back, you're not going to lose anything. Obviously, when Le'Veon Bell comes back, you'll lose a huge sell high window for James Conner. But the bet is. When I you see you the flop, pre and post flop, the, right? Well, the the bet here I would be, <laughs> the the and the and the question that's going to end up coming out of this is what happens next year, because sure. obviously for dynasty, you know, it's this year plus next year and more. If you know Le'Veon Bell comes back this year and he stays healthy, then James Conner is going to be on your bench. Right. Le'Veon Bell comes back this year and he gets hurt. James Conner comes right back into your lineup. Right. So the, I would but say if, that. But let me finish. Then the other one is. <laughs> Le'Veon Bell is not a Steeler next year, and then James Conner. Then, then maybe you have two you have, starting running. Then backs. you have two starting running backs. Exactly. Exactly. Oh so God. there's your there's your play, and there's then obviously scenario. the the other scenario is. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you have the pair, James Conner's doing exactly what you want him to do. Right. So you're probably not selling. No, him. that wasn't the question that I ended up asking. Corey okay. never asks answers the question. Well, you I wanted ask. to set it up. I said I'll just the other part of the question set it up is, forever. If never you don't it. have James Conner. Or if you don't have Le'Veon Bell and you have James Conner, do you sell him right now? If you, well, have, if you have the pair. If you have Le'Veon Bell, <laughs> clearly he's doing what you need him to do, and you're just going to – I'm going to ride This is that. why you're here right. if you have Le'Veon. Right. I'm going to ride that train until I'm not going to ride anymore. And, yes, maybe I do end up with two starting running backs next year. The question is, is if you don't and you just happen to either pick him up for some reason because somebody dropped him or you drafted him last year because you liked him, as did all three of us, uh, probably drafted him without having Le'Veon Bell on on teams Absolutely. all over the place. All over this, the place. Um, this is the reason why I want wanted James Conner in the beginning. I mean, obviously, we, we scouted him, and we did a bunch of rookie breakdown on him last offseason, and we all liked him probably more than most people did. We there were is on that no train. chance anybody else was as high early on Le'Veon Bell as us. I mean, on James Conner. Right. No chance. Right. And I've always, I'm, I'm, I've been leery of Le'Veon Bell. I can't deny his talent. And I eventually came around on, you know, having him on my squad. But I've always had this itch in the back of my mind because he's got these off the field concerns. He's got the Pittsburgh Steelers not wanting to pay him concerns. And he's got these holding out, came back right before the season started last year. And obviously we're, we're seeing what's playing out now. I got to say, he is on Spotify. You can check Le'Veon Bell out. And he's got a five five disc song CD thing. He's well, on once tour you do that, now. you'll realize how quickly he needs to be back playing football. But see, that's the thing. I don't think he thinks that. I well, think he thinks yeah, that you'll, he's you'll, ready He'll figure on. it out real quick once that thing goes. <laughs> you think he could afford some better beats? Like, the music's not even that good. It's just, it's, 
I don't know. But and he does look like he's gained a couple LBs. Let's let, take Le'Veon Bell out of this conversation. But this that's is, a whole other rabbit hole. But this is my point of why I'm, <laughs> I, I, I have James Conner, and now I'm reaping the benefits of having James Conner, and it, it, it could just continue. I mean, obviously, I'm pretty confident that Le'Veon Bell is going to come back at some point in the season. He's not trying to lose a whole year of eligibility. So he's going to come back, and then James Conner is going to be right back on your bench as long as Le'Veon's healthy. I don't think Le'Veon is going to be a Steeler next year, and I could, I think James Conner is the future running back of the Steelers. Like this is, he's this is going to happen again for you next year. Is what I feel like. Mm -hmm. He's shown you so much in these first two games. I mean, he had 31 carries for 138 yards in Week One, while they tried to beat the Browns and couldn't quite pull it off. That was through, you know, that that gets you an extra quarter, ten more minutes of of game there in the. Uh, in, in the overtime matchup, plus it's raining, you know, so True. a little had, more sloppy, so a little more handoffs, but yes. Had can't, six can't targets, deny. caught five of them for 57, so you're seeing this 10-point PPR floor both of these first two weeks right. on top of the carries that he's getting. He's still got and eight touchdown. carries last week after being down 21 to nothing. And, and you're down uh, DeCastro in the game, right? which is a nice piece on the offensive line for the Steelers. And they gave him that goal line carry, and he just... he. He was not going to be denied. It was a second effort. It looked like he was stuffed. He spun out of it, dove into there in the end zone. So I'm reaping the benefits of why I took James Conner and why I have him. I, like, why would I ruin a good thing? Why would I go fishing for well, you, something? You would go fishing because nothing's guaranteed in this league. And there's uh, there was already talks when Le'Veon Bell was kind of holding out whether the Steelers that the Steelers were going to take a running back kind of high-ish in this draft to replace him, so they didn't have to worry about it. Right, your Geist being your a guy, Geist and who knows if that was true name. or not. You could be trying. To I get mean, there was a lot of back. chatter about it, and I would assume that that they're not. You know, I don't think there's that much chatter about it if it wasn't true, um, somewhere in some form, shape or another. So. Number one, you were already kind of okay with replacing Connor. Connor's been great. I like Connor. Nobody's going to beat the drum. I love this guy. I, there's 30, 40, probably an hour of content of why I love James Connor. Sure. But, like, it's this is a league where this position is quote unquote replaceable, and maybe James Connor isn't offering quite the upside that the guy that they know that they had in the guy like Le'Veon Bell just in this game alone, like if Le'Veon was playing, he's got way more than five catches. Yeah, there's like, no doubt he doesn't have 12 so maybe, targets. So maybe you're game, looking yes. to get an elite. Maybe, and maybe you don't quite get a guy who's that much better than James Conner. He just does something different in your splitting time next year. This situ All I'm saying is the situation after this season, if you don't own Le'Veon Bell, all of a sudden James Conner could be a whole lot less um, valuable. Valuable quickly it I, I, on the way that, and, and right now it seems like you could potentially package up a james connor and something decent to go after somebody that i know i felt comfortable with for the next five years in my lineup let's just say that you went after your, like a christian mccaffrey with a connor he's a nice piece to possibly if this guy likes yes. connor and is feeling what's going on there it's a nice piece to as a trading you know, you're still going to have to give up something good to get Christian McCaffrey. Obviously, I'm not saying that yeah. James Conner's just going to get you. But he's a nice bridge but to start. Right. He's a you good could, bridge. He's a package builder right now. Exactly. To get something that you maybe feel a little safer with down the line yeah. rather than gambling and saying, well, I love James Conner so much. He's going to be the guy. I loved plenty of guys who I think should be the guys, but the team doesn't see it that way. And they do something else, you know, rendering my guy invaluable or not invaluable, unvaluable, I guess. Well, uh, so... I like that idea. I, I love the idea of James Conner plus what gets me Christian McCaffrey, gets me Ezekiel Elliott. That's a little high. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, Zeke's James, a little high. I was trying to no, pick yeah, somebody yeah. that was I a little it. more middled. Well, you know, I, I wouldn't want to, but Christian McCaffrey's obviously with the PPR and what Cam's doing with him. Yes, I wouldn't want to do too much side to side. I, 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 Christian McCaffrey's a step forward. And you got to be go if you're going to package. Yeah, I like the I like that phrase package builder. He's a good base to get that package going. Christian, Levy, um, James Conner plus what gets you what? How much better? Right. You know, and I love that. I love that frame. I love that idea. And Christian I, McCaffrey just being a guy that there's the public is kind of all over the place on. Some people are real down on him. Some people love him. You know, so it's just he's somebody that like Zeke. You're probably not going to go get. Zeke necessarily. Well, but, well I mean, but, there's but and Zeke, you could, but the the Dallas offense right now is in flux, sure, and, fair and especially after Week One. Obviously, Week Two they got him a little going, but they Week One was pretty. You know, he got 
He's got two touchdowns basically that have yes. kept you in Zeke like territory exactly, over the first two weeks not, that were kind of. But not nah. that 28 points that you right. were looking for. Not 150 rushing yards and two touchdowns and a couple catches. But to play, I, I, I'm going to agree with what Jay Wayne was saying. I think that Le'Veon Bell's given James Conner enough of a platform here with his holdout and not showing up to work. James Conner's given us enough to show. Obviously, you got D'Angelo Williams and all that stuff that came in whenever Le'Veon Bell's not here. There is production to be had just because of the offense, and they do. They have, again this year, plugged in a running back who they don't pull out to, off the field on third downs to get those catches, and it's not Le'Veon Bell, and it's not the same quantity, and it's definitely not the same quality, but it's enough to give you 20 points a week, and which is and awesome. And you haven't won a game so, yet. You and they haven't won a game yet, but anytime you can get a running back to plug in your lineup that's going to get you 20 points a week, that's ridiculously great. But I will say this, that the defense is – atrocious sure. and you know yes they may be looking better by the end of the season but it wouldn't surprise me at all if they they're still reeling from Shay's ear i hate to even bring his name up yeah. because of every how bad it is but they're well, still reeling they're they've still been trying reeling. to address the defense for years and they keep taking stabs on defensive players. oh yeah what well, they did that they, they took and uh, four linebackers in a row in the first round it's, it's not really just, just ryan Shazier. one pick I'm that just it takes saying. to draft a running back in the mid second or third you know yeah oh it could be an undrafted rookie look at Corey clement comes in and just kind of makes his way into the lineup it happens but i i think that he's given enough to say all right well maybe we can focus elsewhere and then make but yes uh you know, I said it off air that the Buccaneers were not drafting a tight end two years ago when they got OJ Howard. But he, all of us, there, we're not going tight end. We're not, we're not going tight end. We don't need a tight end. Oh my God, OJ Howard's on the board at pick eighteen or whatever it was, and they took him. They didn't think he'd be there. Maybe a top ten pick type thing. I will. But the thing about it is, is a couple years ago Nelson Aguilar's rookie season, the Eagles were Chip Kelly. It couldn't have been better. They had Jordan Matthews. Nelson Aguilar was coming in to take Jeremy Macklin's place. And Casey said before the season, this whole thing could go terrible and they could fire the coach. And I was like, what are you, an idiot? Do you not see what's going on in the Eagles? And the whole thing caught on fire, burnt to the ground, and they fired the coach. You know, so like for Casey to say that there's a, you know, it's a 50 50 chance if James Conner's doing this at this type of rate next year. I'll I'll say I got no problem with the player. It's just a matter of the situation. Well, the situation is one of the best in the league for right. fantasy points for a running back. For sure. There's no denying that. And James Conner has done everything he's been asked to do on the field, except be Le'Veon Bell, but he's still putting up ridiculously good fantasy points. Right. So I guess we come right back around to some type of Patrick Mahomes esque question. Can you get enough to see him leave your roster? Because it's it's not you know, you just you got to go quant quality over quantity. Right. I'm, I'm a big I've, I preach that all the time anyway. So you got to go up from James Conner. You can't say, oh well, I sold James Conner for uh, you know a couple of second round picks or this yeah, or I that. Did, I traded him for Crowell and uh, you know, and, uh, and, and two, two seconds. Twos. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You got to go. No, up. that's not what I'm saying by well, any means. I know, and I'm just, well, we're just trying to help the listener yeah. out here, and because we can't, they, you know, can't just think it for them. Got to tell them, you know, how how we're thinking here. And again, if you go in and sign up to be on Patreon, you can literally send us your trade offers and we'll try to help you through and we'll see your roster and all that good stuff but might even youtube live and uh the answer for you yeah exactly so yes i mean the who we don't you'd have to have a crystal ball to see what happens sure. with james Conner and Le'Veon bell for even just for the rest of the regular season yeah i've only heard one just about but i've only heard i need to say this sorry i've heard one person say that there's <laughs> the two you, there's two weeks that the steelers could be, have Le'Veon Bell inactive, so it, right. uh, almost the entire season is. I, I mean, almost everybody's saying that he's gonna. He, he has to come back for Week Ten right. to get those six. Yeah, games I told in. you this before the season started that they can put him on on uh, the exempt list of some sort and for two weeks. For two weeks, and then his season doesn't count. So if he wants to play and he's have got to come like count, back Week Six, it's it, it, it's got I, technically I think for if and I don't know if the Steelers would do that to him, but I, look what he's doing to the Steelers. So maybe they're like, okay, well you know, f you back, buddy. So I think it's Week Eight at a minimum. Maybe earlier, sure. but I don't. It's not week ten because they have those two weeks to hold over him. So it's week eight or earlier, but maybe not even earlier at this point. So, uh, you know, it's. I think he comes back week six. Just I got no I'm throwing just, a dart. I'm throwing just it throwing out a there. dart. Um, I will say to the point of saying that you know, well, maybe they're not going to draft a running back for any reason, and they're just going to go defense because their defense is real. And like I can see that they could. They're probably going to spend some picks on defense. They might sign a free agent or two. Usually not their style, um, but. Just on the team that they just played. We just talked about it. Punted on defense, essentially. And they're just, you got Big Ben, you got AB locked up. I mean, why not try to get another player that's a huge difference maker for your offense 
and you have Juju Smith Schuster, like you have an elite offense that, you know, you want to go score 37 points a game. You just didn't win because the other team scored 42. So you could be just kind of saying, well, we just need a mediocre defense and we're going to ride Big Ben, A.B., young Juju and a, and a new elite running back that maybe we go up a little higher to spend some money on because we, we we're, we're focusing on offense right well now. They've, they've been they, it hasn't worked they have you know they've afc championship games rarely in the last i mean you know it's like they get they get to the playoffs yeah. and they just lose sure and so you, and you see those defensive teams kick in in the playoffs and it just especially in the afc now yeah. you got the jaguars coming through there it somehow some way the pittsburgh jaguars game last year turned into a shootout you know because that's just what happens with the Steelers. But at the end of the day, the Jaguars won the game, and I I think I yes they have been they've been all offense for years. And but like that's what you hear is Big Ben, A B. Well, just because Le'Veon, we're sitting here and talking about the hardware the defense that you need a defense doesn't mean that the Steelers are all of a sudden going to be like oh we need to just invest everything in defense. Just like the Saints, all of a sudden it took them a while to be like hey Drew Brees is a little older, let's try to get a defense and a run game here. You know it's just. Yeah, you know, they, it's not that they don't try to get players on defense. It doesn't. Speaking of the Saints, crazy how uh, they're zero and two and not and last in the league in rushing while Mark Ingram sits on the suspension. Like he's not important. So Saints are one and one. They beat. The Browns. Oh, they did beat the, somehow the Browns somehow. Yeah. Anyhow, so there was our James Conner uh, breakdown for you. Well, let's move on to uh, another Steeler, a guy by the name of Juju Smith Schuster. He's really coming on, had 19 targets in this last game, had a good week one on eight targets, caught over 100 yards and a touchdown. This is a guy who's got to be in your lineup every week. I've been hesitant up to this point, but I can't I can't hold back anymore. Can't fight these feelings anymore. Got to get him in there. <laughs> How you guys feeling about Juju Smith-Schuster? Well, before last season, we were on the offseason, we were against Juju right before the season rolled around. We kind of started to feel a little bit better about Juju. You did, for we sure. Were, came out and was like, I, he might be kind of good. Maybe we should. We're a little bit more in on Juju. And then before this season started, I had him I had him in the top 20, but I probably had him a little lower than some other people, you know, had him ranked. Uh, but right now, like, I just asked Big Co, like, if I probably before the season would have taken Adam Thielen right now. I mean, I don't think it's even a choice for me. I'm Juju all day long. Oh, you got it's Juju and that. I remember. I mean, Thielen's here. locked in with with Kirk right now. He, they're having a pretty yeah, but solid. Juju's twenty two years old. Th- twenty one. Uh, that's that's the thing is Thielen's uh, already forty. <laughs> <laughs> the, the no knock on Thielen. It's not. I'm right, just saying. Right. It's just I used him as value, an example. Value, but we have example. we have a hard time with Thielen because we were giving you Thielen a couple off seasons ago and cheap money when he was nobody even knew who he was and we were telling you to put him on your squad for free. And now he's like a second round, third round startup pick, and it's too rich for our blood at that point because sure. we've already exhausted that way before you needed to pay that for him. What we're good, do a good little recap there, Jay Wayne. To think about Juju for me, as I remember sitting here in the off season, we were talking about the mock startups and this type of thing, and Juju's value and his his value is undeniable because of the way he played at such a young age last year and his big you know big plays. But I was talking about his. If you, this this season coming up and the 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 high value pick you'd have to put on him in a startup to get him coming into this season and the start ability that he may have because of his targets and I remember we went through the target share of the Steelers and obviously that was before Le'Veon Bell didn't show up and he was going to catch eighty five balls right but and I was just like I don't see how Juju has enough targets as a second year guy in this offense with Antonio Brown and Le'Veon gobbling them up and everything else going on that to, to do, to return that value, even in dynasties, you still wouldn't, I mean, you know, you take a young receiver early enough in a startup and now he's clogging your bench up while you, with that much value and he's hard to help you win games. And that's not been the case. Obviously Le'Veon Bell's not here, but I just, and I think that definitely helps out with, again, when we talked about, Connor and said he only had five targets and you wouldn't be saying that from Le'Veon like you saw Juju and and AB getting 19 you know, and 19, 17 right was, well and that, I think that number would be mitigated a little with probably you know I think you said to you know around probably 10 12 targets for sure. Le'Veon in this situation exactly well yeah you so you bring you take at least three three targets away but still. at least but that well you get a you get a 80 point game between the Steelers and the Chiefs and especially with the Chiefs jump out 21 to nothing in like eight minutes then, like you, you know, if 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 
Roethlisberger's got 60 attempts. It's got to go somewhere. Sure. So 19 targets, which again, the Steelers, that's what the Steelers do. They they just target a couple of guys. They obviously and just happen to have some of the most talented guys in the league. But 19 targets is like half of that's a good game. That five for a 120 week one on eight targets was a really good game. Right. It just You get into a shootout with the Chiefs who don't play any defense either. And so you got two teams that go for 80 points together. Then you get 19 targets. That's obviously you, that's two games basically yeah. that's two good games been 13 catches for a buck 20 and a touch right that's not going to happen every week but the five for 120 on eight targets week one was an in a, in a slop fest rain soaked sure. game on the road against a good browns defense is enough to show you just like you said juju's got to be in your lineup every week i'm with you jay wayne i just didn't see it in his i didn't see his Put him in your lineup and don't think about it. Don't take him out. I just didn't see that as happening right away, especially yeah. maybe even all year long without some I mean, type of injury to Antonio Brown. That's not the case. Obviously, Le'Veon's not here, but Juju is for real. I kept and his him targets in a, are for real. I kept him in a rookie keeper league, and I certainly didn't play him week one. I was like, yeah, he was my rookie keeper yeah, because he was exactly. just on my team, and I, I didn't play him week one. But Just a rising I, star. I did, There's I nothing did. wrong with a rising star, right. but all of a sudden when he turns into a must start every week I did plug him in last week because he was playing the Chiefs, and I figured it would be a shootout. <laughs> yeah. It was the highest total on the board, so I was like, you yeah. know what, I'll roll the dice. Yeah. Um, and it paid off. But, I mean, let's let's just play a little bit of, of the of the Juju Smith-Schuster in a either and or kind of deal. Obviously, Doug Baldwin right now, you're taking Juju over Doug Baldwin. Not close. Right. Ooh, yep. Juju. Juju over Brandon Cooks. <clears throat> that's a good question because Brandon Cooks and the Rams and everything that's going on there just really re-solidified and bumped his value. Oh, yeah. But Brandon Cooks just went through in the last two weeks. He's just went through a, hey, look, this is what. Yeah. What, the forgotten man there for yeah. a little while. He's out there flexing. Like, I mean, right? literally. He's still, a, still a back end wide receiver won last year, but it was just a little up and down. And, and you, you kind of label so a lot him of as uncertainty a, around him. And now all of a sudden, right? Well, there's more than just big plays in store for him. And he's going up making ridiculous contested catches in traffic, just flexing on dudes. And yeah. then you haven't even seen him bust off a, a huge long touchdown yet. I don't know. It's think. just been great plays. McVay's drawing right. it up for him. And he's, in, right. he's right. in there getting the targets. He did, he did lead the league in uh, pass interference calls last year. And right. he's already off to a great already, start yep. again this year because, I mean, it's just, hey, you're going to get beat. Just grab him. Right. But Cooks is a is a guy who is another player I think I got to get in my lineup every week from now on. Oh, there's no question. Right, along so, with Juju, so Juju here. or Cook? I think I'll take Cooks just because I think because the quarterback situation in the long term. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with Roethlisberger. Juju still got Antonio Brown in front of him. Brandon Cooks is, I mean, yeah, I love Robert Woods and he's great. And Cooper Cup is, is a great slot guy. But Cooks is the alpha guy there, I think, right. and going to benefit. I'll take Cooks. I'll take Juju. I'll take Juju. I like the system and the stability and the Cooks contract. Cooks now for I, a while. I, I like the contract extension. I like the fact that Jared Goff's better playing days are ahead of him. Mm -hmm. And I think that Big Ben's obviously more. I mean, he's topped out, but he's. And I mean, it, if Big Ben can stay where he's at, great. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He just happens to be 40. So I I do see, but I mean, uh, you know, he's Big Ben 40, talks. Is he? No, he's 37. 37, 38. I, I, I embellish. I embellish. But you on it? But you know, so yeah, Jared Goff's the third year player here, who's you know on an upward arc. Sure. 36. He's 36. He's got a 47 but year old body. Old 36 old for 36. sure. Slim down. That cut. <laughs> He, he cuts down. a year of he did damage off there. And he no. quit riding motorcycles, I do believe. There's no doubt he slimmed down. I'll take Juju still because Juju's name is just so powerful. Yeah, but if he Brandon stays where Cooks he is, Brandon Cooks is going to continue to rise there too. Brandon Cooks is a riser for sure. And he's he's you 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 love getting Brandon Cooks this year because you didn't pay as much sure. as you had to pay for him in the last two years. I will but say this for they Juju. were probably getting drafted around the same spot. I would imagine. That's definitely worth looking at. Um, how about how about obviously we said Doug Baldwin, Jarvis, he, Juju, Juju. Woo! I know Woo! this is this is getting hot. Josh now. Gordon leaving town, and now you're taking you're taking uh, Juju, huh? Yeah. All right. It's just Juju's climbing. Up I don't know. Tier. I don't know if I, I. I don't know. 
I don't know about that, Jarvis or Juju. When I'm send, on the clock, I'm gonna go Jarvis. I know it. I, right here on these mics, shoot. And the and the Juju. You send send any. You send out Jarvis Landry for Juju and see how many rejections you get. Yeah, you're not gonna get him. Uh, I will say this for Juju. Last year, you know, as a rookie, albeit 20 year old rookie, he had. Oh, I just had the numbers pulled up in front of me, and then I had to look up Ben Roethlisberger because Good Co. doesn't know what he's talking about sometimes. Just back it up. No, it's already out of the back scenario How do you get out of the back scenario? Because you go forward and you change pages. And Anyway, what I've been trying to say for Juju, in his defense here, I don't know that he needs defense. Does he need defense? In his rookie season, he had had 80 targets, which wasn't a ton. I mean, it's, it's a fair amount for a rookie. Had 58 receptions, mostly relied on big plays. Um, right, I was going to yeah. He's sure. a big play dude, and you're seeing that again this year, but then you add this volume on top of it, and granted, maybe that volume goes down if and when Le'Veon Bell comes back because that just that that's a whole focal point of your offense that's coming back into the lineup. I, I feel like it's a lot that's going to get shuffled up a little bit with this team when he does come back. But, I mean, he's still going to have these big plays. He still has that name cachet, so I guess I, could, I, guess I can stick with Juju over Jarvis just because you can you can go turn Juju into something greater than what you could turn Jarvis into. Yeah, sure. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you got I mean, we all we we love some Jarvis Landry around here. I'm gonna I, I would rather have Jarvis Landry. I, I I like the value of what Ju, like I like what you're saying. I like the return on what you can get uh from Juju. I mean I I'm i st- I'm sticking with my guy Jarvis. Suck it. I want to, and if I was on the clock, I'd probably go Jarvis. How about well, Corey I mean, Davis? I, don't, I just Jarvis Landry's got uh, averaging eleven points. Obviously, Juju goes through. Juju has a game where they got an extra quarter in overtime, and then he goes and plays against the Chiefs, where you're going to have to put up eighty, you know, put up forty to play. So that's not quite fair. But Juju's averaging twenty four points through two games, and Jarvis is averaging Let's fourteen. Start, yeah, so it's just I mean, a little bit of an two, out. It's two games. I'm not going to start going with it's two that. Two games. We're having this conversation after two games. So. Sure. And you just said Corey Davis. Uh, I could. I got if, no problem taking Juju over over. Jarvis, I just like what Jarvis can do is is going to continue to do. Now Josh Gordon's gone, like you, you could see a whole lot more opportunities. He's coming battling a little Jarvis bit of an Landry's injury. Way. Who's well, been awesome and very consistent? I know what I'm getting. Sure. So Corey Davis, it feels like Corey Davis is about to take that next step. If fe- like he, they just this team can't get any momentum. It was nice to see him go out there and get you 10 PPR points in a game where Blaine Gabbert's the starter. Absolutely. But he just hasn't he hasn't shown it to you just yet. He hasn't taken this league by the balls like Juju has. I think I'd have to go Juju. Well, I did go Juju early in the offseason when we talked about that part just because they were both young still and I wasn't counting on either one of them to be in my lineup. And for the big waves that Juju had already made, I did take Juju over uh, Corey Davis in this conversation in the offseason. And yes, you got to feel if you're a Corey Davis owner, you got to feel ecstatic about the target volume he's got and coming in his second year. And the fact that this whole the week one is just ridiculous because it took eight hours to get that game played and all those weather delays. And then week two, you got, you know, Blaine Gabbard in there throwing the ball. But you're still seeing the focus of that offense trying to go through Corey Davis. Delaney Walker's out for the year. So I think it only gets better for Corey Davis going forward. I don't know how it gets any worse to start the season. And he's already and he's still scoring he's some consistent. points. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think to play the game the right way, if I'm going to answer this question the right way, I, I think I've still, I, I got to go Juju just because of where he is and what he's doing and his value. And he's if nothing else, if – a year or two or three more with Ben. How, how, I don't know how long Ben's going to be there. He goes from wanting to retire one year to being five more. It's week you know, to week with this It's week guy. to week. Ben's so waffly. Yeah. But if, if Ben's in there, there's no quarterback anytime soon coming to Tennessee. Mariota's not going to flip a switch and be more, and be as, as efficient and as effective as, as, as Big Ben. Well, there ben might be a the new quarterback coming to Tennessee Who knows? by next yeah. season. Yeah. Um, and that's bad for Tennessee, So ben, ben may be being kind of waffly and Corey Davis be like, I don't, I'm assuming that these guys were probably semi close in ADP with probably Corey Davis being drafted over Juju in Most a lot of, of yes, they situations. Were close, so you already had Juju have a really nice rookie season. Corey Davis do nothing and still hold more value than Juju Smith Schuster. Sure. Um, so well, that's you know. what happens when you get taken at number four well, or seven for overall. For sure. In but, the draft. I, but that's that's the Sammy Watkins effect. But what I'm saying now is that you know he was he was still more valuable than Juju, and now he's gonna he's getting a little bit more focused. And if the offense could maybe get some of its starting tackles back in a competent quarterback, which they were already targeting the shit out of him, 
I think Corey Davis has the potential to be more of like he's got the Antonio Brown kind of potential rather than maybe Juju Smith doesn't quite have the, the top end potential of what Corey Davis could have. I get I, that. That'd be an interesting debate. I mean, it's obviously... We're obviously, have- Juju's in a much better situation. You put sure. Corey Stitch. Davis on Pittsburgh and yeah. you're like, oh my God, Corey Davis. <laughs> yeah. Well, but that's that. But Juju is sure. on Pittsburgh and we're like, oh my God, Juju. So yeah, I get it. I see what you're saying, but um, Juju has just looked every bit of... I mean, obviously, at this point in his career, he's he casts right. a huge shadow over Antonio Brown. Two more. Uh, Allen Robinson. Who? Or Juju Smith-Schuster. Oh, uh, wow. That's actually a question now. Good for Allen Robinson. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, had Allen Al- Robinson. I had Allen Robinson ranked 14th before the season started. So Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, you're, you're a bit. You're, you were not being denied on your Allen Robinson love, and I tip my hat to you. It's hard to uh, roll through one of the down seasons with Bl- with with Blaine Ga- not Blaine Gabbert, um, Blake Bortles when Marquis Lee looks like the best wide receiver on the team and then you tear his knee. You wrote it you wrote it out like it wasn't a thing and good well, for you because when you evaluate a player and see that he's actually good, that's what you do. Well, good for you, you did it and and now Allen Robinson's getting some targets. He's just getting he a ton awesome. of targets. He does look good. So Allen Robinson or Juju. Hmm. Today, the, I'm, uh, today, I would take Juju because it's safer, but it looks like Allen Robinson's about to be a t- I mean, that, that Mitchell Trubisky can only he's get being better. Held, A-Rob's just being held back by Mitchell right now. Exactly. And that, admit, but he's still just getting crushed with his, volume. His volume is already there, and if he, that stays there, he's going to be great no matter what he's because being of the held, volume he's and being a good offense. He's being held back by Trubisky, but he's being elevated by Nagy. Right, exactly. And as soon as that is, it can only go forward from Trubisky because he hasn't looked terrible. He just hasn't even been good yet. And the better he gets each and every week, if it, I mean, it may not be incremental. It's going to be bumpy. It's the same thing I said about Tennessee coming into the league, coming into the year. Like I said, Tennessee wasn't going to look great. Could, might probably not look good starting the year. And obviously, here you go. You know, it's hard to say because the quarterback gets hurt. But the same thing, I mean, you couldn't get any more opposite offensive schemes of what Trubisky just had to go through. Sure. John Fox is gone. Nagy comes in compl- like the complete opposite one from one to 10, six to midnight offense. And Trubisky's just not clicking yet. Yeah. And, I, and Robinson's already starting to crush. Yeah. So uh, his, so his got? ceiling is up there today. I'm taking Juju, but I, it wouldn't be surprising at all. If this was a Jay you know, Wayne. big time Allen Robinson slam dunk. Go me Allen Robinson. I'm there sticking it is. with Allen Robinson. One more. We'll go a ve- established veteran who's a little lower on the totem pole. T. Y. Hilton. Juju. I mean, woo! You, any, you got you got a 21 year old who's already putting up points versus a 28 year old. Yeah. You know, older guy. Yeah, it's just it, that's just that's how, that's the name of the might game. even that's be 29. Happens. Exactly. I love me. You some might T. have just Hilton. undersold T. Y. Hilton's uh, age there. I didn't want to. I didn't want to go too, too fast, too too quick. <laughs> I did already call Ben. Hit the back ben. button, Bo. I already, I, already, I already said Big Ben's 40 years old. I wanted to make sure I'd coast it into the T.Y. Hilton age there. What do you got? Oh, that's a toughie but goodie. He's getting bludgeoned with targets by Andrew Luck. And it seemed like this game, he seemed to maybe turn a page a little bit. He looked really fast in this T.Y., that is. Looked like he was ready to roll. I mean, he looked okay in the first game, but I thought he looked really good in this last game and was just getting some intermediate targets. And yeah, and that's I agree. Stuff. And that was that's a, that's out. That's a, that's it. That's in Washington. Yeah. Wait till you get turn that corner, Ty, and come on back and play. I, in that I goal. agree with you. You get the age on your side. It's, it's the just, age. I, that's why the I, thing. That's I saw it. my nose at Thielen because he was a little older. Obviously, I think Ty's got a probably a higher ceiling than uh, Thielen has with Luck and being kind of the only guy around and being make your play in one day kind of a guy um but the 21 and already doing his thing it's really hard for me not to take ty hilton in the situation though i just i think he'll be good i think you're getting it's three, hard i think you're getting three or four more solid years out of ty hilton here i agree with that but at that point ty hilton's on the quick down slope that happens every year when this guy gets older they just slide down to dynasty rankings and for no reason outside of the ages and then at that point Juju's twenty six. But st- I mean, we're talking I, just solely on value, a hundred percent. But yeah. to winning championships, I can see that. And see, that's the thing is, I I'm and really, Juju could definitely help you win a champion. I'm last, not saying that, dude, but the T.Y. Hilton's got nobody in his way, and Andrew Luck. The last the last two startups that I finished, I didn't even I didn't even draft a rookie. You know what I mean? Like I'm all about yeah. veterans and decent and, and middle aged guys in dynasty, and let me win now, I'll beat you up, and I'll get some youth later. 
but Juju's just only, you know, he's just, he's about to pass Randy Moss's yardage record and just based on age, which is a kind of a, you know, toughy when you get, when you come in that much younger, you get more opportunity right. before you turn 22. But he's. That's why it's all about the breakout age. <laughs> But Juju just and the broke, college nominator. Juju's Ju, Juju's breakout age in the NFL is ridiculous. Obviously, he came into the league with that that stink on him, that USC wide receiver stink, where they had just busted, busted, busted. And that, I mean, he's good. He's good. Guy's he's good. really good. That's our uh, synopsis. He's good. I think I I think I'll stick with Ty. Fair enough, Jay Wayne. I you could add, I mean, I a couple him. years from now, I'd be like, dang it, I wish I had Juju. Well, I mean, yeah, we're, not, we're talking about right now, though. But yeah. this is Dynasty, and so you have to not just think well, I'm about trying right to win. Now. I'm trying to win championships with T.Y. Yeah. I, I, I think you get it. I think you get comparable output out of Juju. And yeah, then fair enough. Five, six, at this point, seven years younger. I, it's, to me, Juju, and it's not uh, – I, I love T.Y. Hill. What if Ben walks away from the game next year, though? What if Livian comes back and Juju's target share goes down? Mm, good questions. Hmm. Anyway, give me Ty. Let's get out of here. Let's take a break. Come back with some David Johnsons. Let's do it. Well, come back to another segment of Married to the Game. I'd give that a two. A two. A two. Out of three. Out of ten. You came in so hot, then you were like, uh, you really, really hit the, the ah, big cozy mics muted. <laughs> really, oh, hit, really hit the hard boy. Come. It was weird. Well, it went with the music. Hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome for your pleasure. Which, if you're listening on YouTube, there's no music for copyright reasons. Uh, head over to the podcast for that. Um, and if you are on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. We're really trying to get to 1,000. So definitely do that for us. It would help us out gr- tremendously. We said we were going to get into some David Johnson here. Uh, we're realizing we're short on time on this free podcast, and we want to get to this buy, sell, hold segment that we have plan for you so we're going to table the david johnson yeah, discussion we, we got a lot of uh traction on the buy sell hold and some people hit us up asking about certain people so we wanted to make sure we got that into the free podcast right and we'll go ahead and do the david johnson talk on the patreon show so head over to patreon.com slash the ff dynasty for that you can also get to it from our website the ff dynasty.com as well as uh, we're going to answer all the listener questions we're going to get into some josh gordon we're going to talk about the Redskins wide receiver situation as well. So be looking out for that. Give us that five dollar holla. For well, sure. Let's get into this buy sell hold. Yeah. Let's yeah. And it. also on the Patreon, we're gonna hit you we're gonna go through the list of guys you didn't draft as starters, but all of a sudden you need to have them in your lineup. So the must start the, didn't know you needed to. Right. The must start bench players that just climbing their way up and earning a roster roster start. Well, let's start off the we, buy sell holds with one of those guys at least in my opinion right now is deshaun jackson i definitely want to give the florida Corey on this one uh first so it could be dynasty or redraft just make sure you state both or one <laughs> you know what i'm saying how like in, oh. in well dynasty or redraft we're yeah, okay all right all right this I'm was saying in djax in yes. redraft i don't think there's any way i'm, I'm sorry djax for in a split for a split second there i was already in the guys that were on your bench that have clawed their way in your starting no, lineup no. but we're in the buy, buy in, sell hold we're kind of week, deal here. week two buy sell hold not week two who's these are submitted yes. by listeners here yes well what's so funny about that is because anybody anybody that i hate on and they do well. Casey throws it to me first. And I just because I, I want to see your answer first. I love first. it. I love I it. See this your is great. First. I mean, Deshaun Jackson has been that guy the last couple of years where it just I lo- I've loved it when somebody took him in a dynasty startup draft way ahead of when I would have, and I've loved seeing him basically in people's lineups as somebody who is going to be a dud for them, and I'm that gives me an advantage and. That is obviously Djax has been up and down, and you know a couple years back it was not an advantage when you were going against Djax. It took one play to make your day, but mm-hmm. then when he caught three of them, he was kicking the crap out of you. And here Fitz Magic is the first yeah. two weeks of the season. It right. like, last now he's on fire. The la- I think is it is it is it the first two <laughs> plays of both games? It was touchdowns to Djax. Didn't he start week one? Uh, yeah, like I'm, that? Not, I'm not sure if I, it was the first play of both games, but they're he's stroking it to, to Djax on the long ball. Right, the boys are barring each other's jewelry. Yeah, you know, like he's going. <laughs> Djax said, "Wear my they're, wardrobe." They're sharing clothes at this point. Yeah. He said, like, "Try not to try to stay humble when you." <laughs> Djax was on the top first of the world. Djax was the first guy to come out publicly and say, "We can't go back to Jameis." Got to ride the hot hand. Why? Well, why wouldn't Djax say that? Obviously, but so, so this is this is the reason though that I liked. And stayed confident with 
Deshaun Jackson is because Jameis just missed him on a bunch of throws last year. He was open. He could have had these kind of big games last year. He was there. He was still getting open. He still has the juice. He's Fitzy's just getting him the ball. Well, that's what you were hearing about all last year is why aren't D-Jax and Jameis Winston on the same page? What's so wrong? Why are they missing each other? And then in the offseason, oh, they're working out together. They're making sure they're on the same page. And then Fitzy comes in and says, oh, watch this. Hold my beer. Here we go. <laughs> so so buy, the, sell, hold D-Jax. Let's see if Corey can answer your question for the first time in Married to the Game history. Buy, uh, sell, or hold. You could go redraft and dynasty. Just state which one Either is which. Or, or if you feel the same way in both. Yeah, I mean, obviously in Dynasty, it's it's sell or hold. You got to plug plug them in your lineup and enjoy, um, or get something really good for him uh, because he's you know still in the it's a he hadn't slowed down one bit, but he's not a spring chicken. He's been around for a long time. I was just watching that Football Life Michael Vick the other day, and that I mean like that. My, Djax was all over that. Yeah, and that there's was, a good chance he yeah. helped you get to two and zero in both situations. Yeah, very, very, very good point. So for me in dynasty, it's, it's either hold him and ride him out, and 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 continue being a contender with him. If you, but obviously if you're not a contender, see maximize your sell. Um, and a, another good week this week for the for the uh, Buccaneers because they play against the Steelers defense. So mm-hmm. you could maybe ride that third week in a row of s- some decent volume and you know big time catches. Maybe he doesn't catch another seventy five yarder, but you know that's not going to happen every week. But Djax is just as good as anybody to do it. Um, so yeah, and in in redraft, I mean, th- there's no reason to sell him in right. redraft. You got to ride the there's line. There's no there. selling him in redraft unless obviously you package you know him up with somebody and go get somebody awesome that you could have never dreamed of being able to get with that combination two weeks ago um but yeah i mean I, I, there's no i don't think you buy d jackson dynasty right now i mean you you've had a two-year window to buy this guy you don't go buying him now um but yeah i mean ride Jason? it out yeah i'll hold d jackson if, where you got him for f- almost free in a startup or maybe even picked him up off of waivers in a short bench or something or, or in, a, in your rookie free agent draft, maybe you grabbed him in, in your FFPC leagues. I think you ride that lightning out as long as you can. I don't think they'll go back to Jameis when he comes back. I think as long as Fitzpatrick's slinging it, this is gonna they're going to fill it up again. Uh, and, and if, if, but I like what you said. If you're not a contender, maybe you go look to get something from right. Ajax and, right and now. And I think, I think maybe Dynasty. you figured it out in two weeks that you're not a contender, but most likely you, you probably, probably need a couple – another week or two to right. really solidify whether you're a contender or not. And it's great that he is going to uh, Pittsburgh this week, which we've seen just get dominated in the air. So you get another week to kind of bide time and see what's going on. Right. Uh, and with I, that situation. That, that's exactly right. I'm, and I, that's, I'm glad you brought it up like that. I'll make this quick. I'll talk about it more later, but if you're two and O, O and two, all that good stuff, you don't kid yourself. If you are the lucky two and O it don't go out and buy somebody like a DJX for overpriced and be all of a sudden you can be, you know, two and five because you just got lucky yeah. a couple of weeks. Understand the situation. Know the temperature of your roster. Are you a two and O that deserves to be two and O? Are you a lucky two and O? And that might be a, just a, another, um, you know, really good quick reason to join our Patreon because you can throw all your trade offers and, and all that stuff right past us. And we'll try to help you out with that. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, if you were going into the season thinking that you were, weren't going to be, very good and maybe you, you snuck a win or two and you could see maybe the train might be coming off the tracks a little bit i could see at this point seeing that uh oh, maybe i'm not quite a contender yet but for the most part you're still it's still early right you're still figuring it out somewhat and you know djx could be part of the reason why you're in the playoffs right um, so anyway let's go to another guy chris hogan had a dud of a first week where everybody fired him up and was excited about it probably benched him this week against jacksonville got in the end zone two times two times um we talked i talked about this guy in uh before the season started and he's it's great to have and he his stock got elevated through the off season and he was going earlier in startup drafts than previous years but the thing is with hogan is like nobody ever wants to give you anything for him so if you get him you're pretty much stuck with him and let or they're just giving you peanuts for him yeah and and chris see, hogan is the kyle rudolph of wide receivers right. you can just <laughs> never i love it never get what you should be able to that get that is him. perfect jay wayne and this week right now he scores two touchdowns against jacksonville so you couldn't have a better like flex your muscles see i told you you wanted to buy chris hogan from me and you should have taken all those trade offers i sent your way in the last three weeks or three months or whatever like Casey said, you can't get anything for Hogan ever, even when he's killing it mid-season. Right, even when he's wide receiver 
five or right, four. Right, right. Yeah, to start the league, start the year last year, he's like wide receiver five overall for five weeks, and then all of a sudden, People you still can't get, get anything. Fourth for him. Can't get anything for him. He goes and gets two touchdowns against the Jags, and then they bring in Josh Gordon. And, it, you know, so now you got Josh Gordon coming in. Um, and, you know, obviously they're going to get uh, their uh, slot guy back, Julian Edelman, in a, in a couple weeks. And so. So, well, when, they, when they do get all those guys back, though, it seems to be a pretty formidable situation for them. So I could see where you're going saying that maybe it's a negative, but you could be going and, you know, Edelman, Hogan, Josh Gordon, all of a sudden is a really hard Juju Smith Schuster like situation to, to cover. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, obviously, you know, the the things are going to – you got Gronk and Hogan and you got retread Philip Dorsett and you're trying to make James White well, be I think your best once wide he comes receiver. In, once, once, that, once those two guys get in the game, I right. think Dorsett's – When Josh Gordon comes in, he's going to open things up just because he's Josh Gordon. And then when you get Julian Edelman back, the thing the chains get movier, easier to move. Um, but for me, any t- if you could – if you can sell Hogan this week, I'm I'm selling him. But you just can't give him right. away. Exactly. Right. And I just don't know that you he's, can sell him. Yeah, That's, it, if you could, I'd be down to. But if he can, he's got the Lions coming up this week. So well, there's I another saw, third third week matchup. Good look point. forward to where he does. Josh Gordon may or may not even play this week. Maybe they throw him out up, there as a I decoy. Bet he suits up as, I bet he suits up decoy or not. I bet he suits up. Scheme him a player too. And and get some targets. And Chris Hogan gets. The benefit of that and Detroit, they're not going to be able to stick Gronk. So yes, it probably great, might be without great, Slay. Great week with that. Great week coming up potentially for Chris Hogan again. Slay's yes, he's got a concussion. Slay, Slay got beat up bad. Um, and then, but then, and then you got another week without Julian Edelman. So right. you might have a couple of days, a couple of weeks here where you still get some more Chris Hogan before there. Uh, yes, there's going to be the more the merrier with the P- Patriots offense. But if you can, I sold him last week before week before week two fired off. And I'm. I'll share that with my Patreon members. I'm not going to share that publicly. Oh, I'm going to tease. Can't see the wall. I. I. I but I. I've been trying to trade him. I found a window. I found a package deal for him, and yeah. I'll go. Th- I'll break that down on Patreon. Well, it doesn't matter with Chris Hogan. Somebody's always going to like. Even if it does end up helping him out with these other receivers, like, and he maybe he does crush week three or whatever, people are going to be like, "Well, Edelman's coming back, and they exactly. just got Josh Gordon." Exactly. So there's always going to be a reason, right? And nobody wants Chris Hogan, so and I'm right. probably riding him out. Right? I'm probably just going to ride him out, and then maybe somebody gets desperate. Well, at we've some been point. saying that's the same thing we've right. been saying all season long exactly. is you, you have to ride him out and enjoy. I'd love the to sell him for something decent. Put him in your lineup because he scores points with Tom Brady. But you know, you're only that the thing about it is, is yes, you you can't get anything for him, so you all you got to ride it out. But then you're riding it out, and then he falls on his shoulder awkward. Yeah. He's out for four to six weeks. So even and this is dynasty, and he's not signed long term with the Patriots. He's basically in a contract year. So if you're yeah, looking at what far is it, 28, 29 ahead, already? 20, yeah, yes. one of those. And that whole that's that stat that were you know it's a true stat. He's never had more than forty something catches in a year. It, it, and there's little windows where he's five, you know, wide receiver five overall yeah. to start the year last year before he gets hurt. Hogan is, and he's all those all those seasons were without, you know, it's not on the Patriots. Obviously, he didn't have f- more than forty catches last year because he missed more, half, more than half the season. But and then he comes back into playoffs and blows up and does what Chris Hogan does when Tom Brady's throwing him the ball. I'd love to sell, but it just doesn't seem like it'll be. He can't sell Kyle good, Rudolph. Nobody enough, wants Kyle a Rudolph. A good enough deal to make me want to sell him. I yeah. mean, you know, right. maybe I'm loaded at receiver and I just, I, I don't even know if you can get a second for. <laughs> Right, so good. Yeah, like, and I probably would want to just have right. that advantage. Well, I said in my if, if I was loaded at receiver, maybe right. maybe I take that. But I mean, again, I was. I think I don't think you're going to get market value for him. Right. All right, uh, Broncos running backs, Lindsey and Freeman. We'll go Lindsey first. Ah, oh. buy sell hold dynasty, Lindsey. It's so circumstantial. Like all these questions. I mean, if you if you it is. if That's you just good. picked up. Lindsay and you you have a bunch of running backs, you know, and, and you can never not, have too many running. Backs. I know. And that <laughs> would be the next thing to say after <laughs> being like, I got a bunch of running backs so I can sell one. But I mean, let, let's say I got a league where if I picked up Lindsay, I, I have two different dynasties where in one league, if I picked up Lindsay, I'd, I'd, I want to start him immediately. In the other league, if I picked him up, he, he's probably not in my lineup just based on yeah. the squad that I have. So if, if you don't need him, then you might as well take this. I know Big Code packaged up a trade and shipped him off last week because of this, this spike in value that he got, and I can't blame you for that. Um, and I can't blame you if you saw how awesome he looks and, and you want to hold. Um, I, I don't know if you can go buy him. I guess you could probably buy him. He's probably not too too expensive yet. I, I'd well, be down to 
buy, sell, or hold this guy. <laughs> like, yeah, and like you said, everything, all of this is circumstantial, and we try to gloss over that and, and try to figure out a way to, to tell you which way to go. Um, you know, for the Lindsay thing, maybe the first undrafted, I think, first rookie, undrafted rookie ever to have 200 yard games back to back to start his career. Just, you know, in it, and 100 yards rushing on minimal carries. All purpose yards. He didn't have 100 yards rushing week one. Okay. All right. Fair right. enough. It was all purpose yards. Okay. All right. But, you know, just. And it was for the Broncos. Right. So the the only running back to start their career with the Broncos and with 200 all purpose yards. The games. reason I would, the reason I would sell is because. He's got he came in and he just it was the Royce Freeman factor of the Broncos. Everybody just was loving Royce Freeman and Royce Freeman was about to be he we had a late rookie draft and he was one two. He got picked mm-hmm. second overall right after a Barkley, you know, in the rookie draft. So you got uh, just Royce Freeman was the th- and obviously he's the second part of this question, but Royce Freeman was the shit. OK, yeah. and now so Lindsay comes in and steals the thunder and Royce Freeman, you know, doesn't do hardly anything. They, they get the exact same rushing yards in week, week one, one. And, Roy, and and Lindsay breaks a nice little pass down the sideline for a touchdown. So I did package him up and, and sell him, sell him high because that was an, like obviously that was after the first game of his entire career. And it could it could go up or down from there. And who knows? You'd have to have a crystal ball. But that was, you know, that was on a team where I had plenty of running backs. And for me, that was on a team where I felt like I had a need in other options in other areas, and it was kind of maybe kind of a perfect storm to sell a guy who's just played one game ever. You don't mm-hmm. usually do that, but you know, well, everyone needs an RB two, right? Which is why there's a market for Lindsey right now, and there is a market. People love the hot, the hot hand, the hotness, and, the, and what's going on, the flavor of the week, and they hate Royce Freeman. Well, 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 yeah. I don't right, think so everybody hates Royce Freeman. I think right now the people who didn't like Royce Freeman are reveling in it, and the exactly. people who loved Royce Freeman are like a little bummed, right regretting now. what right. they paid for him if they paid for him. If they bought him later when right. his stock was up. So that that was kind of my part there was the Royce Freeman. That's why I sold Lindsay at what I call was high. Maybe it won't be high later, but maybe it'll be, you know, super high. Maybe he goes a little up because Royce Freeman is. I still think he's a thing. And I think he's good, and he can catch, even though he's not getting any targets, and he can sure. break runs, even though he's not doing it right now. I so I think I, that I think it's much easier for me to go say go buy Royce Freeman. Oh, like, that that's was something. for sure what I was saying when we got to Royce Freeman was right. I'm buying all the Royce Freeman if you want to sell him. Now. Absolutely, I, I like that. I can't say that about Lindsey just because he's so hot right now. It's it's harder to tell you what to do with Lindsey. It's more about what what's going on with your team, and does he make sense for your team, or does he make sense to to sell for something else? Well, because just I think you can kind of do anything come, with Lindsey right now. Well, Freeman, you can't sell him don't sell freeman right now good call go buy him good call. hold him and, or buy and, him and coming out of nowhere all of a sudden Lindsay's getting you a first round pick in some instances i mean if, if Lindsay can get me a first round pick i will sell Lindsay all day long yeah he gone yeah for yeah. sure um but I'm, I'm i'm i wouldn't mind having both of these guys if i could get the broncos backfield i feel decent about it and i'll just i'll ride Lindsay until he doesn't seem like he's the hot hand anymore and then maybe these r- roles switch in november you know correct to, to see what happens and maybe Lindsay, obviously injuries can happen but Lindsay's not the biggest guy i don't hate that at all like i don't dude I'm not, runs I'm tough not a, i'm not a sizeist you're right or yeah, a weightist. No, you're not you're not if you can play you can play he looks shot out of a cannon he yeah. looks awesome he looks Slippery. lightning quick yeah. he doesn't lose any speed when he makes his moves i like what he's doing and he runs tough enough to run you know through the between tackles, the tackles. I don't know how long that's sustainable for. And like you said, Royce Freeman can definitely catch. But if he seems to be the preferred third down guy right now in the pass catcher, Lindsey, that is, in yeah. this offense. Um, so I don't mind having trying to get both of these guys and having a piece of this Broncos offense. I think they got good weapons. They got a serviceable enough quarterback, a, a pretty good line and a good defense, which shapes up well for the running backs on an offensive coordinator who we've talked about on the Patreon show multiple times who doesn't mind running the ball. I agree with all that. I, Lindsay does look shot out of a cannon. And he but if does. you get a first, give me the first for Lindsay and Got to. I'm out of here. Absolutely. All right, so we all agree that we're buying Royce. I would. Jay Wayne, already you're in. Yeah, yeah. I you're buying the top. said out. that for sure. I like that. I think there's nothing. Like, he got, a, he got some goal line work this week. He's had face some stack boxes and looks looked good against it he runs tough you can call him a plotter if you want to call him a plotter i think he's faster than people think he is definitely uh this is a nice contrast to each other these two backs um i i think royce freeman will be just fine uh just be a step right now Lindsay's hot and Lindsay's playing well so you know feed the guy who's playing well 
Yeah, well, that's the thing. You got to that's that's why I sold Lindsay because Royce Freeman's a thing, and that's why you got to know if you even if you're going out to buy, you'd be buying Royce Freeman lower to date, and you had to buy him two weeks ago, no doubt about it. But you, Lindsay, barring injury on either one of these two cats, know that they're both going to be splitting work because they're both good. Lindsay's yeah. really good. I like what, everything what you just said about Lindsay is completely true. So you got to know even going forward, like Royce Freeman is not going to give you that top end performance like you thought you would because. Lindsay's here to stay too. Right, right. Bar an injury, Lindsay's going to be on that field splitting it up with him. Yeah, for sure. I think absolutely. Uh, let's move on to Lamar Miller. Interesting question here. Buy, sell, hold Lamar Miller. Who wants it first? I wouldn't try. I mean, I, I like just you. I think one of the things that you just said just a second ago was so perfect. Everybody needs an R, almost almost everybody needs an RB two. Mm-hmm. There's a market for Lindsay. So there's a market for Lamar Miller. There's a there, Lamar Miller has a market. It's been I'm a little, buying this market. Though. Why? Why wouldn't you? I mean, you can't. You, I, I doubt you get anything to sell him because he's really not come out the hottest, you know. And but there's the Texans altogether hasn't haven't come right. out hot, you know. And I just feel like Lamar Miller has a he can really go only go up from here. He's only averaging nine points a game, and he's got ten and a half and eleven and twelve. And so he hasn't killed you. Hasn't really cost you the week. Mm-hmm. Hasn't won you the week yet. And the Houston Texans has stumbled out of the gate. They right. got they got Will Fuller back last week to stretch things out. You saw Will Fuller and DeAndre Hopkins really start to open it up last week, and you know I think the, uh, the Lamar Miller can, it can, it can only get any be- it can only get better. Ob- obviously, I guess he could stay the same and get you twelve points every week, and that's not going to kill you. You're looking for at RB two most weeks. Sure, you, know? you just want to get that ten twelve to well, this Houston, keep you afloat. This Houston team struggling. They they Tennessee played them well. Their defense is better than I was going to give them credit for. And Vrabel's not too far it. removed from being over there. Right. Let's not forget that. And this offensive line is terrible. I mentioned Good earlier point. on this show they're ranked second to last per PFF through two weeks. Deshaun has no time in the pocket. He looks a little stationary for what we've seen out of him last year. He's still, you know, not too far removed from that ACL tear. It's it's only going to improve as the year gets better. And I think Lamar's look great. He's averaged five yards a carry. Yeah. So he's getting work. He had 14 attempts this past week, 20 attempts the week before that. Only getting a, a he's only had three receptions through two games, which is a little alarming. I would I'd think like that number would go that. up a little bit as this offense Starts right. moving the ball a little better. Right. They're really stalling out. That's what I'm saying. I think when they start to get going, if they start clicking, even if it's not back to where they were that couple game stretch with Deshaun last year, I think, you know, the offensive line has been terrible. And if they get start get clicking a little bit, he's like, as bad as they've been with a bad offensive line and just kind of chugging along, he's still got you 12 PPR points. Sure. So I, I'm I'm down to, to try to, to buy low on some Lamar Miller. Room full of buys. Why wouldn't you? You can't really – not going to get much for him if you sell him, I guess. So buy, 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 buy. Um, this is in sync over here. Well, Backstreet Boys just put out a new song, so <laughs> got to keep it in sync relevant. Uh, Chris Thompson, another guy who's been just carrying you through the first two weeks. This week, he gets a little bit more garbage time production out of him. Uh, Redskins offense didn't look quite as competent this week. Maybe a credit to that Colts defense. Yeah, I, I owe the Colts defense an apology. <laughs> Last week I said they're they're one of the wor- not not they're not very good defense maybe not the worst but close and then they they came out and I thought they played the Redskins good. very well that that rookie linebacker is playing out of his mind Sheard, South Carolina State uh, Sheard is is balling on the defensive line um, they they put all kind of pressure on the Redskins anyway um, I knew when they picked up Sheard it was going to be a good move they got him for hardly nothing and he's a he was a mainstay on my defensive line back up in Madden. Got <laughs> solid Madden ratings. I knew Sheard was going to be good for him. The uh, that rookie forced a fumble there at the end of that game and got the Colts the ball back. They scored. It really put that game out of reach, and then it was just the defense was backing off. And then on that last couple drives, Chris Thompson just like doubled his PPR pr- production just with a ton of dump downs. Yeah. Um, but he was taking some shots. He's he's getting a lot of work getting tackled a Darius bunch Darius Leonard would be the rookie from South Carolina right. State that you were referring to right um I would in redraft hold in dynasty sell Chris Thompson in redraft maybe even buy if you could just because Ooh. who cares if he blows his knee out or something later on you just it's you're trying to find lightning in a bottle for a season 
and not that you're not trying to do that in dynasty and win a championship because obviously I'm, I'm all about you know maximizing quality over quantity and all that stuff and the passing targets from alex smith is about as quality as it gets to produce ppr points for your rb2 and he you know at this point how is how is chris thompson not in your lineup every week i came on here last week and said he was my biggest miss going into the first week on just value and where i, I you know just couldn't draft him he he kind of played us on the whole uh, my knee's not going to be right till november thing and i kind of latched onto that it's like a you know personal confidence thing if you don't have the confidence how in the world are you going to be playing nfl football yeah i don't know why and you told us all that what, you know I, like why, why did he tell us what that? upside is for him to come out and sandbag us like that why gotcha. would he do that just to set the defense up i guess yeah. oh this guy doesn't have any faith in himself <laughs> yeah, exactly we so don't need to tackle him. sandbagging the defense and yeah. he got us on the on the fantasy side of things um i mean in a dynasty league if you can sell high on Chris Thompson, I guess great. But why, why in the world would you sell right now? You're not gonna. You're, you're still probably not gonna get very much. And how in the world? I don't see. See, I think you could get something decent for Chris Thompson. In I the guess Dynasty try world the tra- right now. You could see check the waters. Maybe you could send out a trade that you would have no reason to but love it if somebody had accept. But I, you know, I, again, it's hard. Uh, Alex, it's almost a little perfect storm here for Chris Thompson's checkdowns with Alex Smith not having to what he wanted to have after the out of the wide receiver so far something's not right there to where it's just funneling to check downs to chris thompson i don't see how you move that many points out of your lineup without getting a, a just a ridiculous return you know like somebody again it would be some type of trade where never in your right mind would you have thought you'd have got that for chris thompson two weeks ago it would take that type of trade for me to do away with those types of startability look at look how hard is it to find a running back? I mean, yeah, there's more of them now than there were a couple of years ago, but still, it's still hard to find. Well, running backs there's more, you, but people are clinging on to them harder than they ever have. Right. Before. Yeah. Good luck trying to trade for a running back. So, so I, think I, I just could get a lot for him. I think a lot of people like Chris Thompson right. and they see these big points. And again, he's back at it. Well, that's a good point because nobody else wants to trade a running back anyway. So if you are the one guy in the market selling somebody who's putting up points, maybe you get a, but maybe you do get that King's ransom. He, he's just so small and brittle. He's dealt with so many. Many Never injuries, finish the season, and he's getting so much work that I, I hate to come on here and predict injuries. I just I feel like I should sell high right now before anything goes bad, and then his value is just right back to where it was when he broke his leg last year. Well, I can't blame you there because I'm always you know the guy talking about trying to sell super high, and I've always you know I've been raining on Chris Thompson's. Pre- we 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 hammered it home in the off season. Long term dynasty hold and Chris Thompson don't go together. And I just, it's just it's hard to move those points out of your lineup right now. But yes, Jay Wayne, you're right. He, you, we never ever want to look for injuries. We all, you know, all that good stuff. You never want to look for them. You never, you're definitely not going to predict them. But he's been basically hurt every single year, even in college. And with this extra work, you never know. So if, if you if you can get that high return, I can't blame you. But I can understand if you even if you want to sell him, but you're like, man, I just want to keep winning. Chris Thompson's helping you win. For sure. 100%. All right. Two more guys. Seahawks here. Jimmy Graham on the first one. Jimmy Graham's Jimmy. a Packer. Jimmy. Jimmy Graham's a Packer. Yeah, you are right. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He was a Seahawk. I saw I saw Jimmy Graham and Tyler Lockett next to each other. And yeah. So Jimmy Graham, Packers, good week. I lost a $5 bet to you. You did. About ASJ outscoring Jimmy for the week. Um, so, yes, Jimmy did come up. I, I, honestly, the whole Packers offense – played better against the Vikings than I thought. Yeah, I mean, I, it's not that I didn't think they couldn't do it. It's just that I didn't really expect A-Rodge to go out there and look as good as he did. Um, I am se- I would sell Jimmy Graham, but it get, just kind of like what we said about the running back position with Chris Thomas, Chris Thompson, it's super hard to find more than – you know, super hard to find a tight end that's actually scoring points. But Jimmy Graham's older. To me, I would, I would love an opportunity to get some good dynasty sell high on Jimmy Graham – I mean, I did. I sold both of my. I got a first round pick for him in the off season in one league, and uh, I believe I got Robert Woods for him in another league. Um, I don't know. I got so many trades going down. I can't keep them straight. But I did. I sold Jimmy Graham twice, and and was happy about he it. He is coming off of a great week. He he is an older dude. He's a shell of his former self. He's dealt with a ton of different injuries that that sap your explosiveness, and we've seen that he's really just productive in the red zone and, and scoring you touchdowns. Aaron Rodgers, there's he's, he he's not sure week, if his though. knee's getting better or worse. But that's that's kind of my point, right? He looked good this week. He still has his name cachet. Aaron Rodgers is still playing games. I'd probably try and ring the register here and get rid of Jimmy Graham. 
you know, in a, in a decent matchup, I mean, everybody's a decent matchup for the Packers offense anyway, especially coming off the Vikings and looking, you know, flexing against the Vikings. Um, Jimmy Graham still hadn't had that two touchdown game yet. Mm-hmm. And, and so if for me, I might just hold him and play the roulette on the injury bug, hold him until he gets that two or three touchdown. Jimmy Graham, oh my God, Pat, you know, Aaron Rodgers tight end. I'm not saying that I'm worried about him getting hurt based on what his previous injuries are. I'm just saying that those injuries have sapped what no Jimmy Graham used to be. But people don't, I don't think they realize that because out there when I'm talking to guys at work or whatever about Jimmy Graham, they they still have him on a Jimmy Graham pedestal, but from the Saints days, you know. Sure, sure. And I was super going it coming into last year. I was super super high on Jimmy Graham because he had come back from the injury the year before and didn't practice. Casey remembers this. I was preaching Jimmy Graham to Casey last year because he didn't practice at all two years ago in between games because he was coming back from that devastating knee injury and he played super super well. And I was like, well, now he'll be another year. He get an off season to not be rehabbing an injury and he's going to come out there and look nice and spry. I think he was Achilles. Um, wasn't it? I think it was. A, I thought it was I don't a knee. remember. He's and had a knee, but too, he had but. that bad knee injury that you don't come back from. And he came back from that anyway. And so, yes, I, I, I was super high on him coming into last year. Came out and obviously caught all those touchdowns from Russell Wilson. But outside of that, to he just, see him have six for ninety five and no touchdowns here and have have a nice good good day for you is is nice to see. You get a little less mobile Aaron Rodgers and a little more in the pocket trying to get the ball out Jimmy Graham could be his friend and it could be a nice season yeah. season long uh relationship between those two uh this is the reason why I took the bet against you because there's just not that many guys with the upside of Jimmy Graham even at a you know maybe half of what Jimmy Graham used to be he's still better than half the tight ends and he's in a great offense so yeah no I like I'll roll that. the dice I don't I don't mind selling like you were saying you know cashing out Obviously, you just would have to be deep in the tight end to all, do it. It's all situational, or or not. Just ringing the register I mean, for the tight end a, and playing a backup that you might have taken off the waiver wire or you have on your team. Like that's a good. Well, the the you and I actually, I said, I said uh, Robert Woods, but it was we we got Marvin Jones plus a draft pick for Jimmy Graham. I remembered it. But when we went down, Jimmy Graham was our quote unquote best tight end. But that was it. We were we were taking advantage of the A Rod. He had just signed with the Packers. We moved him, got Marvin Jones pl- and, and a draft pick, and we went down to ASJ and Jared Cook mm-hmm. and on our roster. Right. So it's not like we had a better option than Jimmy Graham to sell. So you're right. And he's, only, he's one week removed from two for eight. So right for sure, absolutely. Just the tight end position, which Rogers, is why right, I don't mind exactly, selling. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. That's why you know I don't mind moving down to ASJ and those guys because there's right. going to be weeks where they do exactly what Jimmy Graham just did. But Jimmy right. Graham obviously has the A Rodge and the Jimmy Graham ceiling Catch over it. those guys. That's going to at the end of the season probably put them a little bit higher than those guys points wise. Well, when when he signed with the Packers, I was able to move him for a first round pick. If you if you can take Jimmy Graham right now and move him for a first round pick, would you do it? Absolutely. <laughs> and all day. I guess it really it depends if. Like again, it's all situational. If I if I got a good squad and I think I'm I've been beating people up and I got a good team, Jimmy Graham's gonna be part of that. I don't mind leaving leaving I, Jimmy Graham around. I know that's a pretty cliche answer, that, but I get um, it. I but, understand. It's hard to trade away points, man. This is this game is so much fun because you don't know what's going to happen. Right. We sit. We can sit up here and talk all this mess, and they got you don't know. Well, I said it last week. You're going to have a guys that didn't score points in week one score points in week two, and vice versa. And the only thing that's not flipping around right now is Michael Thomas. Right. You know what I mean? The only the Tyree only kill. the only people that you know are for sure going to score points every single week is Michael freaking Thomas. All right, let's go Tyler Lockett and finish the show up today. I would absolutely move Jimmy Graham for a first. Just want to state that one more time. Tyler Lockett buying, selling, or holding had a coming off a good week. Had an awesome touchdown catch on a dime from Russell Wilson. Maybe. Look to be taking the the lead reins in that wide receiver core after the week one. Brandon Marshall looked to be kind of like yeah. the lead dude. Uh, Tyler Lockett was a little bit more involved in week two. He looked good out there. He looked fast. I, I think. I think I'm. Pro- I don't think you can get really what he's worth right now. So I'd I'd be holding. Yeah, I think I'm holding and letting the uh, legend grow. Yeah, of, still a little of, early of uh, <laughs> Lockett. We, I, I said this in the off season about drafting Tyler Lockett is that there was so many people that loved Tyler Lockett and were huge into the fan club oh, of him Tyler being Lockett. the next AB even some people were putting him on that pedestal of being that kind of guy when Matt Harmon the reception perception all right, that stuff right. was in its sure. peak um, that was what was you know he was being compared to so I don't think it takes long for the folk hero type stuff to come back up especially with no Baldwin with no no defense no def- well actually I was 
pretty surprised on how well the defense played for most of that Bears game until they were finally just broken because they, their offense was so bad. Right. Well, that's um, a good point. Anytime, I mean, if you get KJ Wright and Bobby Wagner, you got two of the best defense. Yeah, and that's what was surprising is that they were out and they right. were still playing that's pretty what, decent defense. That's a good point. When you um, get those guys in there, they're going to still have a deep. But they just the legion of boom is gone. Right. So. But the problem is, is Lockett has made his living off some big bigger plays right now, and unless. Russell Wilson can ad lib and get away like he normally does, but right now the line's been so bad that it's hard for him to get there. But he has been getting the chance to do that for Lockett, that last throw to Lockett in that in this game for that touchdown was a dime. It was, and Lockett will get open, and I, I, you just need a couple more games like this. Lockett could have some down games. I don't think it'll hurt his overall folklore legend. So I'm holding in anticipation of selling, but I'm going to continue to just. I have him catch a couple more bombs and have his look at how fast he is and maybe his name gets in a couple more people's mouths. Sure. Well, I think with the lack of the offensive line and the lack of the consistent running game and the lack of the, uh, if, if nothing else, the pass defense, which, you know, Wagner is going to help you in every facet of the game when he gets back in there, Bobby Wagner, that is. But I, I agree with Jay Wayne. You're not going to get really what he's worth. And because it went so far down after the knee injury, um, but I, I agree with what Casey's saying, too. It, I mean, Tyler Lockett was one of my favorite wide receivers coming out because why not? He was freaking awesome to watch, and he was fun. And you're, see, you're starting to see that again. And with, you know, 14.9 points week one and 17 points week two, you know, they don't really have a whole lot of other options. And Tyler Lockett is just one of those guys where he's, you know, obviously he's been hurt, so you can't. it's hard to compare him to like a T.Y. Hilton or somebody like that. But he's so fast if he can get back to that spot – even though they don't have really anybody else for the defense to look at, he's not one of those guys that, you know, you can take away yeah. because he, you, I mean, you're, he's just too fast. So, yeah. and I mean, he's not, you know, got Chris Harris from the slot, not Tyreek Hill fast his first touchdown of the year, but you know, so. he, he's not Tyreek Hill fast, but he's fast. He's just one of those types of receivers where somebody's not like, oh, all right, well, we're shadowing him. Patrick Peterson's not going to follow him all over the place. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that's just not how you play Tyler Lockett. You just hope you don't get beat deep. And so far, teams have been get like you said that Russell Wilson doesn't get enough credit for his accuracy. He gets a super a lot. He gets a lot of credit for a lot of things, but that was a dime to Tyler Lockett. And I, I, I agree. There with, will be more of those. And I, I agree just think with both of y'all. Help, help the, the I think you hold grow. and let it keep going because yeah. unless he's unless he's the guy that kicks it over a a, a big package deal that is just you know a a win. If you're, you know, if you're packaging up four guys for two guys or three for one or something like that, if he's the tail, the scale tipper for you to bring in, you know, a, a big top top dog that you, you know, the trade doesn't get done without Tyler Lockett, I can I can see it. All right, well, that's going to conclude the buy sell hold portion of this show by popular demand. I think that's going to wrap us up for the evening. Jay Wayne, you want to uh, take us out of here? Yeah, if you're listening to the show on YouTube or or the podcast, please go on to YouTube and hit subscribe. We're in the home stretch of getting to a thousand subscribers, so greatly be appreciated if you can go and do that. We're on any of your platforms of choice: Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, iTunes. Please go on to iTunes, give us a five star review if you haven't done that. It just takes a second, and you don't even have to write anything. Just tap the little five stars. Be sure to hit out our hit hit up our website, theffdynasty.com. Uh, we've got some forums on there. You can get your uh, questions in on there if you're not ready to take the $5 holler plunge and commitment and buy us a coffee to uh, head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty where we've got um, over eight hours of content on there that's exclusive to Patreon. You can't get anywhere else. We're also answering any questions that come through there. We're doing a live stream on Sundays. Um, just another reason to be on YouTube. But if, if you're on Patreon, you get priority on, on your questions for your sit start and uh and we're just we're, we're constantly answering people's questions in there. I think we're up to like almost a hundred comments and, and posts and replies and stuff in there. So people are definitely getting their money's worth over there. We're about to go jump in and talk about a slew of different things. Josh Gordon, David Johnson, the Redskins. I'm sure Big Co has some trade he wants to discuss. Your mom <laughs> for a while. Um, but that'll uh, do it for today's show. Thanks for listening, everyone. Till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasties, Married to the Game.